So I, I want to know, first of all, how it all started for you guys. How did this script uh, come into your possession, and, and, and what about it spoke to you? Well, um, Dave Congleton had written this script, and he gave it to a friend of his, who gave it to a friend of me, me, of mine. <laughs> and um, and that's how it started, and I, and I read it, and uh, I fell in love with the characters, and it made me laugh. And I thought, this is something I, I'm really interested in making. And then, you know, begins the process of putting it all together. And I, uh, we had a lot of ups and downs, but I enlisted Hal um, to come on board and produce it with me. And um, it sort of came together quickly when Hal came aboard. And um, we, That's what I like to do. Yeah. <laughs> and then we got our <laughs> cast. And, you know, people just read it and, and liked it. For some reason, I think it was just. I think a lot of people can relate to it. Yeah. Well, what does you know, it? One because... of the things I think in the indie world these days, you know, when Ellie asked me to come on board, I think together we came up with a really good plan, and uh, we started out by doing a stage reading, mm-hmm. and we got really good feedback on the script, and we were able to work with the material, and and Dave Congleton did some rewrites, and I think we really focused it and got it funnier, and then Calf really responded to it, and eight months later we were on the set and shooting a movie. Mm. Well, it speaks to, excuse me, one of the things that I really liked about it is it it speaks to the nature of creative people and the whole creative process. And I mean, did you find parallels for both of you as, as independent filmmakers? Did you find parallels between the authors in this screenplay and, and your own journeys as filmmakers? Well, I think we've all met, worked with, lived <laughs> with, you know, at least one of these types of personalities. Um, I know I can say that for sure. And, and you know, you, uh, you recognize it rather quickly, and, and sometimes we – we fall into that trap of thinking, you know, what we're doing is 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 a lot better than it really is, and uh, or we want to, you know, take a lot of shortcuts and and get there quicker because we see other people getting there, and so we must, you know, uh, we must, um, you know, jump to the head of the line when maybe we're not quite ready. So. Well. And the, and the other thing I can say in response to your question is I, I think I'm the more public person in terms of people approaching for material. And, I, you know, just beyond even personalities, I get emails from people. I, you just would not believe some of these pitches. <laughs> I mean, first of all, they're written in gibberish. I mean, they're ideas that are just uh, they're mind-boggling, you know, and, and – uh, you don't want to discourage anyone from writing. And I think what we did in the movie was, you know, we, we really, we, we care about these people. You know, we understand people have a dream and we don't want to be the ones to kill that dream. Even though sometimes people are emailing us and saying, do you want to do this movie? And the idea is so crazy. We're just like, uh, no, you know, but at the end of the day, I mean, we understand the process. People are saying no to us as well. You know, so even though sometimes you have to say no to people, uh, you have to let them down easy. And I think, you know, in the film, hopefully, even though, you know, without giving anything away, the, the people are struggling to find their place, you know, we're not making fun of them. We're, we're, we're understanding them, even though there is humor there. And actually the goal is to inspire writers, you know, if, if there's a way that, and that a writer, uh, after watching the movie, thinks, well, you know, I've got a script. I have a dream. I could try that. You know, that's what we'd love. I'd love to see that happen. Well, and, yeah, and that's that's what I love too about these characters because, in spite of their varying levels of talent, um, they're for all creative people. I mean, you have to have such a resilience and a mm-hmm. kind of moxie to to believe in yourself that you you absolutely can do it and you deserve to 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 attain it. Um, and I, I think that's really an appealing characteristic when when you when you look at it so i i felt that these were very endearing characters but is that a uh, is that a challenge as you just articulated is it a challenge to have an audience um make sure the audience laughs with these characters and not at their expense well i think there's a combination i think they will hopefully will laugh you know a little bit at their expense but also still believe in them, you know, and still wish the best for them because I think they can see 
uh, perhaps a little bit of themselves in them. Uh, so, you know, it's a fine line because these people do exist. And, uh, and you know, we, we want, like Cal was saying, I mean, we want to support their dream, um, but we also want them to live in reality and try and figure out, you know, what they should be doing. Maybe it's something else. They should have well, a dream. To me, the, uh, you know, uh, with the most poignant thing about the movie, that, as it turned out for me, is, you know, it really does ask a, a bit of a broader question, which Ellie just touched on. What happens when you have these dreams? And we all have them. I mean, that's why we're making movies. You know, what happens when you have the dream and you have to, you know, wake up one day and go, oh, my God, you know, I'm not going to – the dream is not going to happen, you know, and, and – uh, you know, it is really it, it's a difficult question. I mean, we run into people every day. I mean, I'm sure we we have faced that question. I know I have, you know, points in in you know our work life and in life in general. So it's just it, it, it it's really you know you, you don't want to crush anyone, but at the same point as Ellie just said, there needs to be some level of reality. I mean, some people I, I've read scripts from people. You know, and not young people either who, uh, you know, the reality is the, the script, you just know. I mean, they're just not going to be writers. And, you know, I'm sure there is the same applies to novels and everything. You know, so h how do you deal with those people? And, you know, you don't want to hurt anyone, but, you know, it's a, it is a business and there is reality. You're not going to go and make a movie just because you feel bad for someone. So there's also an element that. I, I, I mean, that's for the creative person. That's almost completely out of their hands because there's just this sense of luck and and fate that plays such a mm -hmm. role. Um, and and there's also the notion of, I mean, a, a, a creative community that is supportive of one another. I mean, in this film, you have a group of writers that 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 meet uh, in support of one another. But when one of them makes it big. Do you yeah. relate to the feeling of wanting to be supportive, but at the same time think uh, uh, battling feelings of almost jealousy in a way? No, I've never been jealous of anybody. Have you? <laughs> never. That doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. Um, of course you have those feelings. Yes, absolutely. You're spot on. It just depends on how you deal with them. You know, you can feel them, but then do you go out of your way to, you know, really continue being supportive? Um, or do you immediately think of yourself and want to get something out of their success, you know, somehow get a piece of it? It's all in how you handle it. Yeah. And it's being in the community, as you both are, as filmmakers, is it hard to to gauge sincerity from from colleagues and from other people in your industry? Do, do, do you know what I'm saying? Well, I like to think I have a pretty good radar for that kind of thing. You do uh, have a good radar. You do. You know, so, I mean, you know, sometimes it can, obviously, it, you know, it, I always say to people, Hollywood is like any other you know, place. I think there's this perception that everyone is just like trying to stab each other in the back and then they're horrible people and it, it's totally not true. I mean, Hollywood is like any other community. There are some great people. There are some not so great people. Uh, you know, and as as you're working, especially in the manner in which we're working, because we do try to work with some of the same people time and again, uh, you know, you know who you can rely on. I mean, obviously out there in the broader world, yes, you have to be, have a radar and, you know, in different aspects, you know, whether you're dealing uh, with, with agents or whatever, I mean, there's always, yes, you have to have a radar for sincerity and know that sometimes people may not be, you know, doing things uh, for the – for you, <laughs> and yeah. uh, you know, it, but that's you would have that working in any other field, I think, as well. But I'm yeah, I think the one so that usually says, "Oh, Hal, this is what this person says," and Hal's like, "Wait a minute." <laughs> I'm like, "No, they seem really nice." He's like, "Let me meet them too," and I'm like, "No, really, I think they're telling the truth." And not all of the time, but some of the time, it's like, "Yeah, no, you were right, Hal. They're not." <laughs> Well, you know, well, I, I think the one thing about the film industry is, and, and we've seen this certainly with potential financiers or whatever, yeah. you get people who want to be in the industry, uh, you know, and say that they're in the industry, and sometimes it means that either, A, they have no intention of putting one penny into anything, or, B, they actually do intend on putting money into stuff, but they don't understand how the industry works. And from there, I mean, it just, you know, sets off sort of like, potentially a madcap set of circumstances, which, I mean, really, as filmmakers, you want to avoid. I mean, 
you know, sometimes if you're desperate for money, you can't avoid it, and everyone has done, you know, stuff in that regard that, you know, perhaps they would make decisions a little bit differently somewhere else down the line. But you try and ferret that stuff out and you know, work with the right people. And we've been lucky because we have been working with people that have been just amazing. Yeah, I mean, uh, this, the, the people on this movie, I mean, who we worked with were, I mean, they're like a dream. So we were really fortunate on the, this movie. And it extends, and hopefully I think that that's one of the reasons why, you know, he, he, people such as yourself are saying good things about the movie. I mean, we had a really great experience. Uh you know the, the the people we worked with, financing wise, the cast, the, our crew, everyone really was great. I mean, we really had a good time. The cast had a great time on the set, and you know we hope that's reflected on the screen. It absolutely is. You you have assembled a superlative cast that, and and it's one thing to 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 cast. Uh, cast really great actors and, and, and you have some terrific uh, names in your film but there's another thing to make sure that they all mesh together um, so, so, well, so tell me it. about yeah, tell me about the the process of assembling this cast well, for you guys uh, it, it's always a, a puzzle um, and we had you know casting people working on it uh, you know feverishly but um, so that's it, it's always a process um, but ultimately, you get one actor on board. Um, in this case, it was Dennis Farina, who, as you know, is no longer with us. Um, yeah. But he was the first one on board. And then it kind of, you know, you build the cast. And, and then you have one person, and then you think, okay, would that person work with the other person? And, you know, it just, I don't know. I don't know what the, um, you know, magic of that is. And, and I certainly can't say that I have it or people have it or don't have it i think i think a lot of it is luck and but when it does come together it's uh you really feel it and then you can nurture it and then uh you know hopefully have it show on screen i i, you know, I, I have to ask you to a number of people that uh, the biggest problem we had on the set truly was that the cast when ellie would call cut and we would need to reset for the next setup or whatever uh, the, the, the ADs would have a problem getting the cast to go back to their trailers because they were having <laughs> such a good time on the set and they were uh, and they were just sitting around joking and laughing the whole time. Yeah. You know, and that's that's a very very good problem to have. I always try and, that's and make, a, that's um, make an effort. You can, you can feel that. You can feel that oh. in the movie. That that that's infectious. I think. Yeah. I always try and make an effort to have um, whatever rehearsal time I I can get out of people and and in in a situation like this. It was really important to have, you know, a couple of read-throughs just privately running through the lines and, and having the actors meet each other, um, you know, just the six, six main actors, and just to be able to, you know, get that feeling of friendship and um, had them hanging out a couple of times. And I think that really always helps as well, especially in an ensemble. You know, it, yeah. it, it, but it is, it, it is, you know, how, whatever, and Ellie is amazing at doing that. At the end of the day, obviously, I mean, we can't control how personalities, you know, get along. Uh, two people could dislike each other or whatever. I mean, it's happened before. Uh, you know, we were just so fortunate because they really did enjoy each other, and they really, I mean, it, they really bonded, and we bonded with them, and it, 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 that just made it great. I, I have to ask you about, working with Mr. Farina, because I, I had the pleasure of interviewing him, I think a couple of years back, uh, for The Last Rites of Joe May, I think was the mm -hmm. name of that film. And <clears throat> I've always been such a huge fan of Mr. Farina, because he seemed such an authentic presence, um, mm -hmm. and a very authoritative kind of presence. But but you could tell he was a very relaxed, kind of good-hearted guy what, what, yeah. what was it like to be in his company oh it was so it was fun it was just fun when i when i first met him he told me that he had a good feeling about this movie and that he thought it was going to be a really fun movie to be a part of and and he really made it fun he um he made us laugh every day he, he had these wild ideas and had no ego and was just genuine and professional and um, just ended up becoming just a dear friend and he he will be sorely missed. 
I, I've got to say, from my perspective, uh, you know, Dennis had, was discovered by Michael Mann, who's one of my favorite filmmakers, and I've been a fan of Dennis, you know, since I saw him in, in Michael Mann's Manhunter, and he was obviously in Get Shorty and all these, I mean, just remarkable th- roles. So when Ellie came to me uh, and said, Dennis wants to do the movie, I was like, you know, get out of here. And then when we actually <laughs> got to the set, the day he came to the set was truly uh, uh, one of the proudest days of my life that Dennis Farina was working on the set, uh, uh, you know, as an actor in a movie that I was producing. And uh, I was very lucky because I got to sit with him a couple of days at lunch. Uh, I went to school in Chicago at Northwestern, and he was obviously a cop in Chicago, and he was telling me stories about the old days in Chicago and, and his transition to becoming an actor. And it, it was just it was an amazing experience. And, I, you know, the only regret that I have is obviously that, unfortunately, uh, you know, I didn't get to have more of those conversations with him. Well, he has he, he had such a gravitas to him, but but with movies like Get Shorty and and, and your film, uh, he had just terrific comedic chops. Yeah, uh, and yeah, and it always so. surprised you because I would think of the guy in, in the Michael Bad films that, that I'd see that I see him in your film, and oh yeah, he's he's hysterical. Yeah, yeah, and he you know if you look at Almost anything he's done, there's always, like, Law and Order, when he was doing that, like, he always filled it with humor, like, wherever he could. You mm-hmm. know, that was just in him. Well, he was trained, was it Second City? Uh, I don't know. I, don't know I, I, I think he did improv in Chicago, and, uh, you know, he really did have amazing comedic instinct. There's, you know, now we can talk more about this than I can, but in, in every take, there was, there was improv going on especially in, in relation to Jonathan Bennett's character, William, and Dennis kept coming up with different quips in every take, and we didn't know exactly what he was going to say, and they were all hysterical. Yeah, I would tell him, just do something else, do another one, and he had them. He had such an arsenal. It was, uh, oh wow. God. Well, yeah. this brings up an interesting point, because I think the, the, the best uh, comedic actors – um, they they are usually equally adept at drama, and I think they're they're very effective at comedy because they're able to cut to the truth of it. I mean, they're they're mm-hmm. able to find the truth in the comedy. As a director, is it a challenge to kind of calibrate the the level or the tone of of the comedy to make sure everyone is a, on a consistent kind of level? Yeah, I mean, there there are definitely moments where, you know, it goes a little too far and you want to sort of reel them back in, um, but, you have to, but you have to be able to play. You have to allow them that, or at least I, you know, I did on this movie, and, and that was important because, because sometimes, you know, maybe in some scenes you can, you know, loosen the reins a little bit more and have them go a little bit over the top, and then in the next scene, you know, make sure that reality is still there. I mean, you still have to, you still have to have the audience believe what's going on. So, um, like you were saying about truth, you know, if you have the truth, if you can be honest, whether you're being funny or dramatic, it doesn't matter, but if you can find the honesty in whatever moment you're in in the scene, then and the audience can believe you, then it doesn't matter, you know? Yeah, yeah. Everyone's in sync as long as it's truthful. Does that make well, sense? I would, it absolutely makes sense. And I would think that when you're working on a, on a comedy like this, I mean, you, you, you can find it incredibly amusing on the page or on set, uh, but there's always the mystery, is an audience going to respond strongly to this? So it, it, when you first screened it for an audience, uh, kind of mm-hmm. an objective audience, mm-hmm. um, what was that feeling like and, and, and what was the result of that screening? <laughs> well, we screened it a few times, you know, before we locked picture, of course, for our our friends and people, you know, in the business that we trust. And, and I mean, the first time you screen it, you know, <laughs> it's uh, – I'm horrible at these screenings because I, you know, I'm just – biting my nails and pulling my hair out and, you know, the usual things that you think a director is doing. Um, and, but at the end of the day, when you, when you hear laughter in unexpected places, you know, it's just, it's great. And, you're, so, you know, and you, you, you then see things that you didn't necessarily think were that funny. Um, and, you know, vice versa, unfortunately, sometimes things you're like, wait, I thought that was great. And then you need to finesse, you know, and that's just sort of the editing process. And then every time you screen it when you're, you know, when it's done, there's still different, 
you know, lasts in different places. And so every time I see it, it's a different experience depending on who the audience is. And well, comedy is time to yeah. arrive at this final, you know, at the final cut of the film. I mean, I really think we spent a lot more time uh, on this film, uh, showing it to people, you know, working on the rhythm. I mean, mm-hmm. to me, when Ellie would call me into the editing room, for my opinion, the rhythm was was really the key. That you know, it shouldn't drag, and uh, we got some very good feedback from very close friends of ours. You know, and over time, I mean, there was actually, you know, just one day where Ellie said, okay, don't come in today. We're going to, she was working with our editor, Stephen Myers. We're going to spend the day. I've got an idea, you know, and then they called me the next day and they said, come in. And I watched it and I'm like, that's the movie. And that, and that's basically, and that is what you're seeing now on the screen. Yeah. And I would think that that's part of what's so magical about comedies, too, because I, I was just speaking to filmmakers that, that made a very heavy drama and I was asking them about the screening process, and they said it's nerve-wracking because you absolutely – it's impossible to gauge their enjoyment of it as the movie is going on. But, but comedies are – I mean, they're pretty immediate. I mean, you, yeah. you know if it's working right off the bat. Yeah. 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 Um, so if you're sitting I, in a room and there's silence, that's probably not a good sign. Not that's for bad comedy. news. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. bad news. So bad news. I, I'm interested in um, the, the, the release strategy – um, and what you see, uh, Hal, is the, is the viability of this, uh, because it's it's currently available on demand. It'll be released in theaters, uh, I believe, April 18th. Is it? Mm-hmm. Or, so, yes, so April 18th. Me, in 12 markets. Because I'm fascinated by by the on demand platform. It, 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 has that become an essential tool for for independent filmmakers? Do you think? I think so. I mean, obviously, we haven't seen any numbers yet. I mean, from what we hear, the film is doing quite well. Uh, uh, I know Comcast Video On Demand is is really extensively promoting it. Uh, Kelly did some special, and Ellie was there for that, did a, did a special interview, which they're running on a loop on their uh, Video On Demand preview channel regularly. You know, when we sat down, we were very fortunate on this movie. We had a lot of offers once we screened it for distributors, and... Uh, we, we were very interested in, well, this is actually a premium video on demand when it airs prior to the, uh, to the theatrical release date. And then if it debuts simultaneously video on demand and on the theatrical release date, that's called day and date. And we were very interested in a deal like that because, you know, as indie filmmakers now, uh, one of the things I think a lot of indie filmmakers heard over the years was, you know, the film would open in New York, it would open in L.A., maybe a few other markets, and then everyone else was hearing about the movie, and they couldn't see the movie. And, you know, in the world we're in now where everything is so quick, that just frustrates people even more. You know, and and what this does is it enables the entire, uh, because we recognize that indie films are popular all over the country, not just in New York and L.A., it offers everyone a chance to see the movie as they're hearing about it, you know, and for us as filmmakers, it, 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 it allows us to reach our audience rather than putting it into, you know, three, four, or five theaters and then waiting for it to come out on DVD two months later or three months later, whatever the window is, you know, at the time. So it, it's very immediate. Uh, it allows us to combine all marketing into one strategy because obviously the digital release and the uh, theatrical release are, you know, coming up concurrently. So, you know, there are a lot of advantages to it. I think, you know, you know you'd have to speak to the distributors where are, they're seeing a broader picture on more movies, uh, you know, but I know that this strategy is being used more and more, so, you know, and they are saying that they're having success with it. I expect we'll see it more in the future, uh, but, you know, we, I think we really like it, and, and we're seeing, you know, very good results so far. And there are also it's different fast. audiences. You know, you've got yeah. people that are really just going to watch it uh, on TV. There are certain people that are just going to go to the theater, and there are certain people who are going to watch it on their phone or, you know, tablet. So we have to sort of cater to everyone. You know, and I watched Veronica Mars opening day in my house, you know, and, 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 I, and I love the show, and I, I, I'm a, I love the cinema experience going to the theater, so I would prefer to see it in the theater, but it, it happened that it wasn't playing. It was... It, 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 it was just easier to watch in my house. They, they got their money. I got a chance to see the movie. I, I really enjoyed it. And Everyone you know, that's that's really what we're all tapping into here is the you know the ability to reach people, you know, because obviously we know going to the to the theater itself that that's you know an activity. If you're if you're married and you have children, you got to plan for a babysitter and. 
you know, do all those things. And if this way you're sitting on your couch, you want to watch a funny movie on Friday night, you click on your video on demand and you get to see the movie without that effort. So, you right. know, for, and, for and indie filmmakers, and I, I think the studios would love to do this. The theaters, you know, obviously are dead set against it, and they it would have to be at different price points. But you know, for for the indies where the theaters are allowing it, uh, you know, it, I think it really represents a tremendous opportunity for us. We were just talking about this on our last show, and 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 I was bringing up the point. This is why it's such an interesting discussion to me because there were two high-profile documentaries that came out just this this past week or so that I'm dying to see, um, and they're not available on demand, and, and which I feel is a big misstep because mm. I, I would think they would need to take advantage of you know their their high profile. I mean, when they're hot, when they're on the New York Times, and everybody knows about them. Not six months from now, where people really have to rack their brain to remember the film. But at the same time, I, I was curious about the the viability of on demand because there's such a big mystery on how well films do on demand. There, there is, there's no question about it. And obviously, we're this is the first time we're releasing a movie like this, so it's you know it's hard to talk other than strategically what we hope and think is going to happen, uh, you know, but I, I think what people are seeing, you know, because one of the complicating factors of all this, and we're lucky because we're working with screen media and stars who are both fabulous co companies and used to dealing with these things, but, you know, the number of places that you have to track at any given time, you know, it used to be, you know, DVD went out, they would do the sales, whatever, you know, now there's Amazon, there's iTunes, there's yeah. Voodoo, yeah. there's, you know, uh, uh, there's obviously all the cable and satellite video on demand. There's all the digital platforms. So, uh, uh, you know, you're basically getting, you know, a, hopefully, uh, you know, nice chunks from a number uh, a number of places, but you're not getting the one big thing like you used to get from DVD, where a DVD would be released and you could count on, especially with the distributors who had, you know, very good data on this stuff, you could count on it being, okay, you're going to sell X number of units to uh, Blockbuster and Block you know that sort of thing. That obviously is all gone. So we're, you know, we're. I, I think it's it's a transitionary period. Uh, you know, we're also actually waiting to see, uh, you know, how this all plays out. Not only for this film, but for future films. You know, and I and I think you know the entire industry. It's 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 just sort of trial and error. It's like what you were just talking about with those docs. You know, some companies are not either because they don't have. Uh, the right placement with the digital services, because really the key here is that, uh, you know, the digital services have to uh, accept the film and say, okay, this is a premium title, which we were lucky to get. Uh, you know, we debuted on iTunes and New and Noteworthy, and they gave us very uh, high placement. You know, and if, if you get that, it can work really well. You know, for, for another film where they're not getting the feedback or the company can't achieve that, then, you know, maybe it's not the right move uh, because, you know, you're going to release it on digital, it's going to get lost, and and, and then, you know, you, that would be uh, – it, it's all in development now. Let me let me ask you this, just to get off the business end of it for a little bit. Um, before I let you guys go, I, I wanted to know, because you guys have collaborated together several times. Um, yeah. We yeah, don't really like each other, but no. you know, <laughs> it, just keeps, it just keeps happening. I don't know what, what's going on. I don't know how, believe me. <laughs> I, I want to know what clicks between the two of you, uh, how one of you complements the other. Um, well, how – no, I'll, I'll, I'll try not to be funny about this. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, how uh, – has a kind of what we touched on earlier, you know, I'm sort of a little more trusting, like, oh, hey, I want to do this movie. And Hal's like, well, wait a second, this is what we got to do first. And I'm like, wait, what? But I want to be, you know, I just want to be out shooting and I want to do this. And he's like, well, wait a second, we have to get the money first. So it's kind of like he brings me back to reality uh, sometimes. But also it's, I think it's a trust and it's a, it's a matter of respect, um, you know, mutual respect. And um, and uh, taste. And vision. It's a common vision. Yeah. I mean, we have. I think we both have similar tastes, and at least to what's you know, good, bad. Um, what makes us laugh? Um, what the audience will like, hopefully. Um, and and you know, we we listen to each other. 
most of the you time. You know, and even on circling back to the beginning, even on casting, I mean, you know, and, I, and I'm very involved in that, and we work very closely together, you know, because it would be great, you know, and I know Ellie would love this year with her casting background. It'd be great to go out and audition, you know, and come up with the, you know, and just say, okay, these are the best actors independent of worrying about any business concerns or can they open a movie or sell a movie. You know, and the trick is to try and have that balance, which I think we achieved here with having an amazing cast, but also have them be right for the roles, which is, you know, yeah. which is a trick. So, you know, I, I think that's also where we work well together because, you know, there's really nobody who has uh, better judgment in terms of casting from an artistic standpoint than Ali, you know, and then we sit down and we go, okay, are we, you know, is this going to get us a movie? Are we going to be able to make the movie with this cast? And, you know, and then we go from there. 